Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing the LCD 5802D from Iyashi. Now this is a ground station screen with an inbuilt DVR, diversity, and as well as a battery. So it's pretty insane and some kind of a sunshade going on for it here. So I have actually been using it. I've used this quite often now. I've been using it for a week. And uh, let's take a look at what it comes inside the box here. All right, so once we open it, we're greeted with the screen here. And just be careful removing it because of the antennas here. They are RPSMA, take that into consideration. Uh, they also provide us with a manual, the cleaning cloth, which is really nice, and a really nice pouch. It's a little bit dirty because I have been using it, like I mentioned. Uh, so this is a really nice pouch here for it to keep it safe and uh, protected from the elements and as well as, you know, getting scratched up in your bag or anything of that nature, which is really nice. They give you two dipole or antennas. A external charging or just external power for the uh, screen if you needed it if your battery ran out and an AV input wire so that's really nice I think it even has AV output we'll double check that right now all right guys so here's the full package this is everything that it comes with like I mentioned the cleaning cloth the manual the external power like a battery power this takes up to a 3s possibly even more we'll double check the manual right now uh, the AV input here so if you wanted to do you know if you wanted to connect it through some kind of antenna tracker or another ground station to just route the video here you can also do that you also get the charger which is rated at 12 volts 2 amps so it charges at 2 amps here and we get two dipolar antennas and it is RP SMA take down consideration I don't know if you can choose between RP SMA and SMA and as well as we get our pouch and our cleaning cloth so let's put these things to the side all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the screen itself here now as you can tell here it's very well protected through this plastic piece the sticker isn't holding on that great but I'm actually playing on removing it and just putting a bunch of other stickers on there now obviously Ishin didn't create this this is an OEM manufacturer screen they go to manufacture and they just put you know their name on it on the box and just like a little sticker or something so this screen actually seems to be in the market for quite some time and it's a really good screen in that perspective because I've also gotten a lot of people who are recommending this screen to me before I even went for it. So let's take a look at the external outputs and inputs and before going on booting this up and taking a look on the inside. So as you can tell here we have two antennas they're both RPSMA. I have cracked this open it does have a diversity antenna a receiver so it does have a receiver here and a receiver here and uh, we have Two antennas which is RPSMA. We also have a speaker mounting solution. We also have a tripod mounting solution. We also, let's take a look at this side. We have an AVN, the DC is 12 volt in, and we have an SD card for DVR because this thing has DVR. We also have an AV output which is really nice. And now again they do provide you with the wire that you need here. So you might say, well, what do I need AV out for? Well, maybe if you wanted to connect a couple screens together, you can do that as well. You'll take the AV out from here, put it in the AV end of the other screen or into your goggles. So maybe this one has diversity and your cheap little, you know, whatever goggle just had one antenna. It was pretty crappy. So you can just route it directly from here and have this be your diversity receiver. And at the same time, your friend watching the screen while you have your goggles on while you're flying. So it's really nice that they incorporated these two. Here, here we have the reset switch. So if you, something happens, you can just press it it'll reset everything uh the dvr recording was pretty good i'll probably show it on the screen now or probably towards the end of the video it wasn't me flying it was my friend flying i was teaching him how to fly uh he would never wear the goggles so when i got this I told him you know what try we'll try just try once with this and uh he just fell a little bit more in love with drones again now so he's almost ready to try goggles so that's something really nice what i really liked about this actually this screen so let's crack this open now if you can tell these plastic pieces here are to cover up the sun so you're able to see in the you know when the sun's hitting or you know just give it a shade so you can see the screen here because it's not OLED it's an LCD and I did test this in the snow and uh, it was working pretty good but everything was just really really bright so but it, we were, I was still able to fly just fine with this now if you take a look here the hinges look pretty solid I would give them a seven out of ten if you take just take care of it like just you would normally use it and just be extra not too cautious but just be cautious like you would be on anything that belongs to you you're not gonna have any issues and you can tell it just locks right here so if I just lift this up just slightly this will come down and if I let go the spring wants to push it out so it's not gonna be closing in anytime soon and it locks with that right there as you can tell now if we wanted to close it back up same process on both sides so we just uh push this one down you got to hold it because there's a spring in there and then put this one down and then just close it up the closing mechanism looks good looks pretty solid hopefully it's gonna last all right so let's talk about the battery performance and everything so the battery is rated for 2000 milliamps and then I cracked the battery open and actually removed it and I tested it and it was rated around 1800 milliamps or 1847 or something so it's close enough for my liking it is using a lipo in there and it is easily 
easily easily and again easily moddable but to be honest you're not really going to need to mod it because they provide everything for you right here you know the only thing i'd probably do for this is i would actually probably start designing it right now uh for example if you set this up on a tripod right now if we set it up on a tripod battery the internal battery died we needed some external battery because they do provide this with you with it which is really nice but a jst type but you don't need an xt60 for something like this because it's not going to be taking that much current what I can do here is make a little attachment that'll slide inside this or use the exi existing screws to create some sort of battery strap so you can just stick a battery on the back and you're good to go. Which I think would be very useful, especially for me out in the field because when I used this, it was actually around negative four and uh, the battery just kept saying it was basically not dead but it dropped quite significantly when i knew it was a full charge but again in negative temperatures nothing lasts even my quads lipos last like a minute which is just terrible but this kept going and going i didn't have it die out on me i get i got to use it for a good hour in like negative two negative three weather which um which is really good i actually used it for a couple days out and uh, i really liked it and i'm building a lot of trust in it and it's um the diversity is handling very well, I would say, but again, it's still too early. This will be long range tested also on the channel. I'm very excited to actually get this one tested as well. Talk about some of its features. Currently, right now it's on diversity. It's hard to see, but I just connected a quadcopter. I'm going to show you first the search function. The search function isn't as you expect. What it does is it'll search until it finds the first channel that has some kind of signal, which was this one. Obviously, we have nothing. We click again. It's really fast, though, which is something really nice to see here. So I'm guessing there's nothing here also. I'm going to do another search here and another search. There we go. We're getting there. I think this is the correct channel currently. I could be wrong, but and I could be correct also. So as you can tell right now, uh, actually the screen on the, anyways, the camera screen is, I mean, to see this on camera is a little bit different than real life, I think, but it's, it's looking really nice here. So as you can tell, we have diversity mode, and then it gives you the channel. And for the channel and the band, you have separate dedicated buttons for, which is something really nice, and it's a lot faster to change. So I can just switch the channel really quickly. And if I wanted to switch the uh, the band, then uh, what channel were we on? I don't even remember. All right. And if I wanted to switch the band, I don't have to hold that channel button again for two seconds for it to change. I could just immediately switch the band here, which is really useful and just for quick. Uh, change of channels is something really nice. Now we also do have a DVR, which is really cool. Uh, the DVR, if you press it once, it'll take a picture. If you just hold it for a second and let go, you'll get a recording sign up here that says it's recording. I'll show you some DVR towards the end of the video. And uh, if we go into the menu, I never, I never figured out how to use the, I never figured out how to use the DVR where we can actually watch what was uh, recorded uh, because I just couldn't figure out the buttons. Maybe I have to go over the manual, but I haven't done that yet. Um, as you can tell here, we do have some of the, uh, here's some of the settings here. I didn't have to change any of this. Rotation, for example, if you set up your uh, camera upside down, your quadcopter, you can do that. Or you're, for some reason, this is upside down, you can flip the image. Uh, so that's, oh, we just switched the source. Yeah, we're going to get into the source right now. Let's just do the menu. So we have rotation here. Volume, I always have it off. Power off, and then just your language, and that's it for that. So let's wait for it to disappear right now. The menu will disappear in like two seconds. It has like a sleep mode. Okay. So currently we're in diversity mode and uh, what you can do also is if we switch through the source here we can go to RFA which means we can go into receiver A or antenna A and we can also switch to receiver B here which is really cool. So you can set up different channels for each receiver here and uh, you can you know watch two friends with just switching with the uh, menu button here which I find to be actually pretty pretty nice and pretty interesting. AV this is the AV input and uh, now we're back to diversity mode, which uses both of the uh, uh, receiver inbuilt receivers. Now, in diversity mode, you cannot sw choose one channel, one channel, like separate channels. It, they, it'll automatically be set up on the same channel on both. And we do have a battery indicator that always stays there, which is really cool. And when you're recording, it does give you a red button. Now, let's talk about something about the recording here. The recording is reliable, actually. I didn't have any corrupt data. Everything was recording. Uh, even though I kept on and off recording on and off on and off. It was really nice the, the video quality of the DVR is 100% usable and I will definitely be using it for my channel um, I think I think I'm not sure. I think I find it to be a little bit better than my fast shark HD threes But I didn't record the same day with the same lighting conditions in the same camera So but it looked really good and you guys will see that in the video here at least in my opinion it looked good very good actually good enough i mean you won't be able to tell a difference between it and another dvr by much so in that perspective it's good so overall it's a really nice screen i definitely recommend it especially for winter time right now i'm finding myself sticking it on a tripod 
and just flying around the uh, the, the shop here. Let's put these little micros that are coming out. Now I'm really like starting to like a spe specific brand of micros, not because they're fast, but they're because they're hella durable, like insanely durable. And why do I say that? I'm, I do crash, but not as not quite often as a as someone basically beginning here. And uh, I just got my friend into quads, and I do have the LDARC ET100. And also this one here, which I have been giving it to him, and he's been just thrashing the living crap out of them, just crashing nonstop everywhere. And they're holding up insanely good, like really, really nice. So these are really nice to fly around the house, the shop, whatever, because um, the plastic they're using is just remarkable. I mean, it's um, they're doing something right here, even though some of the things they're releasing kind of have proprietary stuff like this battery, but we can be easily fixed. I need to design something to take other batteries here. It's a really nice flyer, this one. I wish it came with more batteries, though. And we'll see this in an upcoming video here. I will be using this to fly it around the shop, and it's uh, it's actually really fun, to be honest. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is my review of the Eashin LCD 5802D. D stands for diversity. We have two RPSMAs. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.